Uh, warming up my voice for my audition for Sydney Philharmonia Choirs. Now, look, talk to any professional musician and they'll tell you the worst thing about their job is having to audition. In fact, it's been likened to root canal at the dentist. But I'm here to tell you that most people do survive their audition. They walk out, still alive. And this short video is just about what to do, how to prepare, and really what to expect at an audition for the Sydney Philharmonia Choirs. So let's go inside and see what happens. So here we are on the day of your audition. I'm going to be the guinea pig and put myself through the audition process. We walk in and the very first thing that we'll probably do is just warm up your voice and get it working. So... Once my voice is feeling nice and limber, I'll sing my audition song, which in this case is going to be Caro Mio Ben. in reality I'll sing the entire thing but once you've sung your piece we need to work out where we're going to actually put you in the choir firstly whether you're a tenor or a bass but then whether you're a tenor one or a tenor two baritone or basso profundo so we'll do a couple of range exercises <laughs> Once we've done that, worked out where we're going to put you in the choir, we then need to work out how quickly you can pick up a piece of music. So we do what's known as sight reading. You'll be given a piece of music that hopefully you've never looked at before. Ah, Comiers of by Bach, never seen that before. And you'll be asked... To sing the first bass part. To sing the first bass part, so... He's not starting yet. a note perfect rendition what we're really after is sort of trying to ascertain what your potential is to the choir how quickly you can actually pick up a piece of music so there you go that's what your audition is probably going to be like on the day but I suppose for a lot of people auditioning is a uh, a rather stressful thing because let's face it it's a bit like the musical equivalent of a job interview and job interviews are hardly stress-free but um, there's plenty of things you can do to make the day a little less stressful I mean preparation is one thing isn't it yeah be well prepared and um, the, the the choice of piece yeah choose make, a piece that you like is important something that you're going to enjoy singing yeah. as well just uh, and a piece that's not too high not too low I mean there's no use coming in and singing a piece which is obviously well and truly but beyond you um, but also, it's, it's, it's got to be a little bit more complicated than Ferris Sharka, I suppose. That's right. You, know, you do need music for the accompanist. I think that's important. Um, I suppose there's a couple of things on the day you can do to help, like make sure that you've had plenty of sleep the night before, you keep well hydrated throughout, uh, throughout the day, maybe even keep using your voice. And um, just give yourself time to arrive at the audition too. There's nothing, yeah. nothing worse than being five minutes away uh, from your audition starting and you're on a bus somewhere in the heat, frantic, uh, trying to get on time. So just leave lots of time to get there, get there early, just relax, get some water, uh, maybe meet the accompanist, that yeah. sort of stuff. I mean, make yourself feel good as well. I mean, you know, some people feel very comfortable walking into an audition in t-shirt and shorts and thongs, but other people, you know, might like to wear a suit. It's really what is comfortable for you, but I suppose at the end of the day we want to see people who enjoy what they do. I mean, that's essentially yeah. what we're doing. We're, we're trying to ascertain people's potential, I think, in what, many, many ways. What about the side reading? I know a lot of people are always a bit apprehensive yeah. about the side reading. Well, you know, people, ha let's face it, lots of people have different levels of sight reading. Some people can sight read their way through a difficult piece by Bach with no problems whatsoever. For other people, they've got to go away and learn it. But basically, we need some gauge to work out, you know, that, that exact thing. How long is it going to take you to actually learn a piece of music? Are you going to cope with the huge workload and sometimes very complex pieces that we do here at, um, at the Philharmonia. One thing that people often ask us is, you know, what do I do if I, if I don't feel well or if my voice is not working really well? I think, I think in many ways it's probably best to show us, show us your best side. Um, so, I mean, if you're feeling ill on the day and your voice is not working as well as it, as it could, we can always hear you at another time. It's probably best to audition when you're 
in top form than to come along and say, oh, I've been sick for three days. Sometimes we can't really hear the difference um, there. You know, the other thing is, I mean, people do get, get stressed and, and nervous at auditions. In fact, the panel was sometimes nervous as well. Um, anything can happen and anything can happen and that's okay. So if for some reason, you know, you don't come in in the right spot of your song or if you manage to miss a few notes in the sight reading or, you know, yeah, or if your voice goes really dry, you know, just ask for a glass of water. Basically, it's, it's a situation in which you can be in control, I think, a little bit. So, you know, we're looking, like I said, we're looking for potential. We're not looking for a necessarily perfect performance. And we want singers. We're looking for yeah, singers. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's the thing. Remember, at the end of the day, the panel is on your side. So what's stopping you? I don't think very much. And we're nice people, as we have demonstrated in this video.